Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I have more news for you once again. And today's news is a little bit scrambled. We've got a few on some devices, a few on some games, and a few on some possible device releases. So there's quite a bit to talk about. As usual, in case you guys like this one, make sure to slap that little red button down below and let's get right into it. So the first piece of news I have for you is a game based on Google Earth. If you guys have ever played Google Earth VR, it's actually a pretty decent game. Apart from the uh, few errors here and there, my mom actually got to check out the world in VR without ever having to actually go to those places. I, I mean, if you just want to visit some places, maybe see them from a bird's eye view, it's a pretty good game. But do you know what it was always missing? multiplayer. Oh yeah, and quest support. Well, both of those are coming now in a new game called Wor World? World? It, it, it has like six O's. And it is a multiplayer version of Google Earth VR that is coming to the Quest releasing soon. So this is quite exciting. Google Earth VR was a fun and useful way of seeing the world. It's easy to lose yourself visiting all the different places, your hometown or places that you've just never been to before. You know, some that you might want to see and some beautiful, crisp 360p game graphics. However, it's only been available for PC VR until now. World, with three O's, isn't being developed by Google. However, it appears to be making good use of Google Maps APIs, giving it access to all of the 2D and 3D data you'll find on Google Earth VR. One of the biggest differences is that World offers up a more limited rendering of Earth 3D data, which was undoubtedly done to lighten the load on the Quest's more modest mobile chipset. While that's slightly disappointing, from an immersion standpoint, it's offering up the whole experience in multiplayer, which includes voice chat, customizable avatars, and even a mixed reality pass-through. It also has access to Google's Street View photospheres, which looks like a cool way of checking out the planet with a friend. So, you know, uh, depending on what phone people use to create those photospheres, you might get a really high resolution image there. And yeah, I've made a few of those, tried to find them. Other than that, it looks incredibly cool. And I mean, the 3D pass-through mode is also a very cool and handy idea. So let me know what you guys think about this one down below. And as usual, you'll also find the article down below. Next, Vario. If you guys know, the Vario Aero was released quite recently. We actually watched the event live, and it was the first headset from the company that's meant to appeal to individual customers rather than large organizations, and it probably won't be the last. So this is all about the fact that Vario may actually be releasing more headsets for consumers now that they've had quite a bit of success with the Aero. Since the company's inception, Vario has sold high-end enterprise headsets to the likes of Fortune 500 companies. This is until last month month when the company revealed its new Vario Aero headset, which was not only substantially cheaper, but was, for the first time, sold without any kind of annual upkeep fee, which made the company's other headsets a non-starter for individual buyers. Yes, Vario actually had this for the longest time. They had this thing where you had to pay annual to actually access the service, which made it a, a, just a non-starter for normal people. Speaking to road to vr this week, Vario Chief Technical Officer touched on Aero's recent launch, saying the headset is still backordered, but he expects things to start catching up in February. As of now, the company's website states three to four months from purchase to delivery. Wow, they've really got a backlog there. As for what happens in the future, he said that Aero would probably become an ongoing series of headsets from the company rather than a one-off. So that's actually really cool, seeing a company switch from kind of more business-oriented headsets to a more kind of consumer-based headset lineup. That's really cool because we're going to see more and more of this happening, I think, personally. And that's really exciting because it means more of those company-based features like eye tracking, mouth tracking, full finger tracking, body tracking, are going to finally be coming to us consumers, including haptics. I forgot haptics. Haptics, very important. So that's really, really cool. And I cannot wait to start seeing those showing up. Talking about Vario, Vario is also bringing foveated XR cloud streaming to its headsets and beyond. Vario, today announced, and today being the 19th, because this was written on the 19th, today announced it is introducing Cloud XR Streaming, an XR cloud streaming service for enterprise customers. The streaming solution leverages the headset's foveated rendering to deliver high-quality XR experiences on less powerful machines. The company plans to eventually allow other headsets to make use of the service as well. This is really cool. To be completely honest with you, this is another something that I think is slowly going to start appearing to consumers. So yes, all these companies are now using Cloud XR and enterprise users are using Cloud XR. They're using cloud computing. They're computing up in the cloud. They're using VR Cloud Gaming. But as we've proven, VR Cloud Gaming is actually quite 
feasible, even on not really good internet. I mean, we played it on mobile data. So yeah, I think services like this are slowly going to start appearing for us consumers and it's going to go kind of the way of the headsets, which is really cool. Let me know what you guys think about Cloud XR and Cloud VR down below. I know there's quite split opinions on that, especially for people that don't really have the best internet connection. But uh, actually, if you guys want to drop your internet connection speeds down in the comment section below, it could be quite interesting to see what people's speeds are like. We could gather an average. Mine, for example, is one gigabit. But it would be quite interesting because I keep thinking, you know, internet speeds are increasing. These Cloud XR services are going to become more feasible, but I could be wrong. So it would be great to see people's internet speeds down below. Don't post your IP address. Xbox has acquired Blizzard. Microsoft announced it's planning to acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion, making it the largest gaming acquisition to date. Microsoft CEO says the studio will play a key role in the development of its future metaverse platforms. So here we have Microsoft and probably maybe Xbox hopping into the metaverse game. I mean, all the companies are hopping onto that ladder right now. We've seen literally everyone, including TikTok, by the way, in case you don't know about that. Microsoft seems to be gradually absorbing some of the gaming's most influential companies in an apparent bid to solidify its position in a market that's rapidly changing to focus on immersion and interoperability. I don't know how to pronounce that. Between virtual worlds, what some have dubbed the metaverse. So yeah, as you can see here, more and more companies are hopping onto the plans for the metaverse. And even though Microsoft showed no future plans of having VR run on the Xbox, I think that might be changing. And I really would not be surprised if that was the case. I mean, Microsoft already had a platform of VR headsets. They called it mixed reality headsets. The those could run on the Xbox. I could totally see them making those run on the Xbox. I, I think it would be possible, especially the latest one. It's very powerful. But yeah, we can see Microsoft hopping onto the Metaverse game here as well. And I mean, they've got Minecraft, so they're already quite far inside the Metaverse, if you ask me. That game could definitely be seen as a Metaverse. As usual, in case you guys want to read the full article, you can check it out down below. Sony's founder finds himself calling VR annoying. So this is, uh, everyone has their own opinions, but this this person's quite influential, you know? It's, it's, okay, let's see. It sounds like PlayStation creator Ken Kutaragi, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, isn't very fond of immersive headsets. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, Kutaragi branded such devices, which presumably includes those made by his former employer, as simply annoying. Headsets would isolate you from the real world, and I can't agree with that, he said. Headsets are simply annoying. Okay, so that's quite a powerful statement right there. Headsets are simply annoying. But the fact that headsets would isolate you from the real world, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the point of them. Like, yeah, when you put on the headset, you're supposed to be not in the real world. You're supposed to be in a different world. You're not supposed to be caring about what's around you. Some people use it as a means of escape from the real world. I mean, that is the exact point of them. Kutaragi's comments have been echoed by others in the past past, though his standing in the industry definitely gives his words some weight. He spearheaded Sony's leap into gaming in the early 90s with the creation of the original PlayStation, eventually going on to become CEO of that division of the business, then known as Sony Computer Entertainment. He departed Sony in 2007, shortly before the company would first begin experimenting with the technology that would lead to the eventual release of the PSVR in late 2016. He now heads up the Japanese robotics firm Ascent Robotics. There guys go. Uh, the person who spearheaded PlayStation to the top finds uh, VR headsets annoying. And VR Valheim. I think this is a huge success when it comes to VR modding, and it really shows you how good VR mods can be on games that were not originally meant to be VR modded. So Valheim VR mod updates bring experience tantalizingly close to being VR native territory. This article, just the title of this, must just put a huge smile on the developer's face, or at least I think this is one of the largest compliments you can give to a mod developer ever. Valheim, the popular Viking-themed survival game for PC, doesn't natively support virtual reality, but thankfully there is a full-featured mod out there that lets you play it via PC VR headsets and the Oculus Quest via Link or Air Link. The unofficial mod has gotten some pretty substantial updates that have really rounded out the game and made it feel more like a built-for-VR experience. So there has been an update to the HUD, there has been updates to the minimap, there has been 
fixed compatibility problems, fixed bloom graphical effect, tweaked arrow rest position, disabled room scale movement when attached to things, added option to avoid rotating with locks when locks turn, added the option for exclusive room scale sneak, fixed a problem with K, B, and M controls where users would look slightly off angle, added the option to disable recenter pose where holding controllers in the front of the face for three seconds caused a tracking reset. You can find the mod on Nexus Mods as well as the article down below if you guys want to check out, of course, the full details and information about the Valheim VR mod. Overall, I think this is really cool. I want to see more mods changing our flat screen games into VR full-fledged mods. I mean, Minecraft VR, Vivecraft is still one of my favorite VR mods to date. I mean, you know, Minecraft was the game of my childhood and throwing it into VR just made it that so much better. I don't use it anymore on Hypixel, but other than that, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys like this one, please give a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, paying my subscriptions, paying my bills, and just overall making these videos better. So thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to be part of this community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And if you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge ad on your body. So as usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.